Lord, we are here this evening to be blessed by you. We are here tonight to receive from you. Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice who is seated here tonight or is watching or listening to this message, speak to them in the name of Jesus. Speak through me to them in the name of Jesus. Speak life unto us all in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, make my tongue like a pen of a ready writer and speak life into our situation. Speak life into our challenges. Speak life to our issues in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. God is good. I said God is good. You see, we say these things in church, but please don't take it for granted because God is good. God is a good God. The nature of God is good. God cannot be bad. God can never be bad. Amen? Um, as we go to the message this evening, I just want to appreciate the senior pastor for this opportunity to minister, which I do not take for granted. Can we put our hands together for the senior pastor and pastor for the for them? Thank you. Uh, and I also want to appreciate the leadership of the youth church for their support in all that we are doing in God's kingdom. Thank you very much. Um, two weeks ago, I started speaking about kingdom exploits. Um, and I, I'm just going to quickly do a recap. So I was talking about two factors that can aid, two factors that can help us to achieve exploits for the kingdom. Because kingdom exploit, it means that there is a king in his domain and you are doing exploit in, in the domain of the kingdom, of the king. Okay? So we, we spoke in length about the God factor. I said there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there is two factors that will help you to achieve, to, to be able to do exploits. We, as, I said the God factor and the... And the and the human factor. And we, and we spoke about the God factor. Um, so today, I want to talk about the human factor. But there is two sides to the human factor. We have the personal factor, and we have the people factor. So in this service, I'm going to be speaking on the individual factor. In the next service, after this, I'm going to be speaking about the people factor. Because I don't want to rush everything. I've got about 11 points or so in total. So I don't want to rush everything in one. So if you're not planning to attend the, the fourth service, please make time to watch, to listen to the message on YouTube. I have no doubt in my spirit that it will bless you in Jesus' name. Um, so I want to speak today about the human factor, the, the individual factor. Ladies and gentlemen, in as much as the God factor is the foundational factor, the God factor is important. Scripture says, they that know their God they shall be strong and do exploits. So the God factor, when you know God, when you have a relationship with God, you become strong. When you are strong, then you can do, because weak people cannot do exploits. Okay? So the God factor is the foundational factor. And scripture says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can be righteous do? The, the God factor is so foundational that once you lay the foundation of a building, then you can build upon that foundation. Because the foundation already will have indicated the structure, where the bedroom, where the living room, where, where everything will be. Okay? But the senior pastor often says that it is irresponsibility for you and I to put all our responsibility on God. Because there is a role you have to play. You have an exam tomorrow. And you, you still have to go to the library to be disciplined and to read prepare for your exam. You came to church to pray. Or you stay back in your room to pray. God is not, God is not a, a, a magician. Okay? God is a God of order. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you don't know, you cannot write. <laughs> you go into an exam or you don't know it, you can't do it. So I want to speak on the, the, the personal factor. And there are seven factors I want to speak on tonight. There are seven things the Holy Spirit has led into my heart 
that I want to speak on tonight and they will pray. Number one, you've got to have humility. You've got to be humble. Ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, Luke chapter 14 and verse 11. If you are too prideful, if you have pride, you can't do exploit in God's kingdom. Because when we talk about kingdom exploit, it's not your own exploit. It's you doing outstanding things in the kingdom. It's you glorifying the kingdom of God. So ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the example of humility that we all need to follow. We live in a world where people... People, people, people are there's so much pride, there's so much interest, there's so much envy, there's so much, there's so many things. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do exploit, if you want to stand out, you need to be humble very quickly. All right, scripture says, Can I have it in NLT? Luke chapter 14 and verse 11 in NLT. Yes, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who, ex- those who humble themselves will be exalted. So when, when you are humble, God exalts you. When you are exalted, then you will do exploit. It is impossible that you are humble. You see, being humble is not a sign of weakness. Just because I'm humble doesn't mean I'm weak. No, I'm smart enough to know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It is people who have pride that they want to do the most. They want to show off. No, no, no. If you want to do exploit, you can't show off. Because there is a pattern, there is a way you have to follow. Okay, Proverbs 22 and verse 4 says, The reward of humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. When you have riches and you are honored, how will you not be able to do exploits? And when we talk about, when we talk about doing exploits, not just, you see, we're listening to a message today, you know, you know, you know in, 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 in Birmingham Church, and you see, light is Light is useless in light. I'm going to explain. See how bright this place is. You can imagine broad daylight. The sun is shining. And you go outside, you put on touch light. You put on the light on your phone. It's useless. Light is only needed in darkness, not in light. Light is irrelevant in light. So a lot of things that we do in church, in as good as it is, we also need to practice outside of church. Because there's so many dark things in the world. But if we are, a lot of us, we are only humble in church because we come to church. By the time you're out there, somebody is at you, give back to them. That's not humility. And scripture says, people watch what you do. Matthew 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine that people will see your good works and glorify God. If people are seeing anger, if people are seeing pride, if they are seeing envy, how would they glorify God? How would you be an example to them? I pray God help us in the name of Jesus. Number two, integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, Proverbs 11 and verse 3. Proverbs 11 11 and verse 3. Integrity is something that must be at the core. It must reside in your heart. Scripture says, honesty guides good people. Dishonest destroy treacherous people. When you are dishonest, when you have no integrity, you already you are destroyed. When you are destroyed, how can you do exploits for the kingdom? We need, we, you know, there are some people you know in some areas of, our li- in, of their life, they have no integrity. Some people, they are so terrible with time, you don't even trust them when they say they're going to come at this time because you know they're not good with their time. I need to repent in that area. Amen. Somebody pray for me. So, you see, you see, in our broken, sinful, and dying world, men and women of God must be the model of integrity as we face life with biblical tools that Jesus impact on us. We need to have integrity. If you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. What are you standing on? If you don't stand for anything, it's that you, it's that you are standing on something or you are not. You cannot be in and out. When you are lukewarm, Scripture says you are useless. You are not useful. If you are not useful to God, I wonder who you are useful to. If you are not even useful to yourself, I wonder what life would make of you or what you make of life. So ladies and gentlemen, integrity means you stand on God's word. You become unshakable. You, be, you don't compromise. Oh, it's my friend. Oh, it's, it's our birthday. So because of that, we went to the club. And you, 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 you've made a vow to God that you will not do this. 
Now, because of a friend's birthday, I don't want to lose that friendship. The truth is, you are not going to lose that friendship even if you don't go. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Luke chapter 6, 16 and verse 10 says, One who is faithful in a very little also is also faithful in much. One who is dishonest in very little, when people, lie on, when people lack integrity on small things, trust me, big things, <laughs> you can't trust them. You cannot trust them. It's that simple. It's a principle of life. When you are faithful in the very little, you'll be faithful in what is much. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Number three, courage. We see it three times in the book of Joshua chapter 1. God told Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Ladies and gentlemen, for you to do great exploit, you need to have courage. You need to have boldness. You cannot be timid and do exploits. People that do exploits, you, 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 you stand on what you believe. You believe on what you're standing on. You have courage and boldness. You have courage and boldness. You see, Scripture says in Joshua 1, and verse, well, that's verse 6, but I want, I, I want to speak on verse 9 in particular. Verse 9, he says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If God is with you wherever you go, how would you not do exploit for the kingdom? The king of the kingdom is with you wherever you go. How would you not do exploit for that king in the kingdom? So ladies and gentlemen, we need to know that, you see, oftentimes I tell people that, you know, to the glory of God and with, with, with a lot of prayer, a lot of mentoring, I'm, I'm, I'm hardly afraid these days. Because I know greater is he that is in me. That it's not pride. I just know. I don't need to tell you. I just, I just, I just have boldness. You know, I tell people that when I was a student, I'm going for an exam, whether I'm prepared or not, this exam cannot kill me. I will go with courage because if you go into an exam and you are fearful, you're already defeated. Oh, I wish Minister Derek was here. He never goes to a fight and be fearful. When he's going to a fight, he honestly will have courage that I'm going to destroy my opponent. I'm going to beat my opponent. You can't go into a fight and you are fearful. No, no, no soldier goes to war and they are scared. They have no courage. Already you are defeated. Already you are, you are, you are under, you are below. You see, we see great examples every day all around us of people with great level of courage. We see physical and physiological examples everywhere. But how about the courage to stand for your conviction? The courage not to fall into sin in this dying world. When our faith and our character is challenged, where do we stand? Do we compromise? Do we just let it slide? Do we just let it go? Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do exploit, this is your own personal. These are things you need to work on. These are not the things that God can do for you. Yes, you can pray about it. When you pray about it, you put them in God's hand, but you have to pray. You know, sometimes your parents know you need money, but if you don't ask them, they won't give you. Because fam, pounds is not easy. You won't understand until you start working and you have a mortgage. You know fam, <laughs> you have to prioritize your mortgage <laughs> Amongst any, anything else. Okay? So it is important. It is important that you are courageous. You are courageous. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. Be, be courageous about your faith. For some of you, your closest friend, your flatmate, they don't even know that you, you are a Christian. You try to just don't talk about it around them. Why not? When I was a student, ladies and gentlemen, I go to uni on Monday. You ask me, how was my weekend? You are in trouble. I will tell you how, how fantastic church was on Sunday. You ask me. So wait, let me give you feedback. I'm telling you. Especially if you, if you are close to me and you ask me, and if I know that you, are, you don't go to the same church or you're not, you don't even go to church, oh, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I'm not, for I'm not afraid to share the gospel. For I'm not afraid. But if you, are, if, you are, if, if you are too fearful, if you have no boldness, you have no courage, you cannot, you cannot do exploits. And I pray God will help you and I in the name of Jesus. Number four, give. 
You see, oftentimes, when we talk about giving, people think we talk about money is the lowest form of giving. When I'm talking about give now, I have, I'm not even talking about money. You've got to give yourself to God. You've got to give yourself, you've got to give yourself to God in service. You see, a life of service is one that will richly be rewarded. There is no return without investment. No reward without risk. There is no opportunity for exploit in any of these or other ventures without the investment of time, of effort. You have to give yourself. How much of you have you given to God? They that know their God. The more you know God, the more you are able to become. And the more you be, the more you are able to do. But the reason why many of us are not even doing is because you don't even know how to. Because you don't know the one that will help you to know how to. I hope I'm making sense. You see, people who fail, they usually have excuses. They have, they are, they have to, they are blaming someone. They have resentment, they have anger. But those who succeed, on the other hand, they do so because they are willing to give up something for themselves in order to achieve their goals. How desperate are you? You see, what you give yourself to will give back to you in double portion. If you, give, if you want to do exploits in your academics, give yourself to your academics. Don't be lazy. You cannot be lazy. You've got to give yourself. You've got to give all of yourself. Very quickly, Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Now, it says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. So whatever you give to will give back to you. If you want, in any area you want to give, you want to do exploit in, give yourself to that thing. It will, you will receive something back from it. It's a matter of time. You know, we're listening to the advert by, um, if I let's go to my next point, number five, self-discipline. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do exploit, you've got to discipline yourself. I could have put the word discipline. The greatest form of discipline is not the discipline imposed on you by your parent or by your pastor. It's the one you impose on yourself by yourself for yourself. Self-discipline. Not, oh, my mommy said, my daddy said, my pastor said, Philip said, no, 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 no. What are you saying? Because it is what you are saying that will motivate you to keep going. You know, one of the guest ministers, uh, Pastor Agu, was speaking on, don't worry about doing five hours of vigil. And for the next two weeks, you don't pray. Rather pray 15 minutes every day for two weeks. That is consistency. That is discipline. In as much as the five hours is good, if there is no consistency, then it's, 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 it's not useful. It's useless. It's a waste of time. A lot of us, we are so lazy, and you want to do exploits. You, we, we are so lazy. If you, if you are not disciplined, you know, Scripture says so much in the book of Proverbs about people who are in discipline. Very quickly, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to verse 11. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to verse 11. I want you to follow me. Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 11. Take a lesson from the hand, you lazy bone. Learn from their ways and become wise. Verse 7. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work. Verse 8. They labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. Verse 9. But you lazy bone, how long will you sleep? When will you wake? Because some of it has, you oversleep, you miss your lecture. That is laziness. That is not acceptable. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of hands to the rest. I'm sure we get the point. Laziness will never get you exploits. Laziness. You see, when I was a student, I can never forget my uni experience. There were so many ups and downs. My first year was so good. Oh my days, I was bowling. 
They give me a deadline, I do it in one week, and I submit. I never even step foot in the library. I go home, get my work done, and that's it. Two weeks, one week, I'm done. Boom. Of course, I go to, I go to the computer and get my work done. You know, when you are fresh, you, your, your prayers call you every day. Don't, don't, don't do this, don't do that, all these things. You just run in my head. But my second year, I thought I'd arrived. Oh, half of the time, I was sleeping. 9 a.m. lectures, fam, allow it, man. I just allow it. Hey. When it was exam time, I failed. I prayed that God, I prayed so much. I prayed, but I still failed. Because I was lazy. I became so lazy. You see, when you become comfortable with the uncomfortable, there's no way you can do exploits. Ladies and gentlemen, missing your lectures, is there's no reason for you to miss your lectures. I don't care what it may be. There's no reason. Some of you are laughing. There is no reason. Because, you see, university, uh, your academics is full-time. And they are training you for life after uni. Because for some of you, when you're going to start work, maybe 7 a.m., 8 a.m., you will leave on two hours before you get to work. So you, 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 you think 7 a.m. is early. Ask people who have full-time job. They will, they will tell you what time they Some of you, you just live in Rally Park or, or um, Broadgate Park. You walk to uni, 15 minutes, you're there. Some of you, you can still, you can have friends when I was in uni. They don't even shower for coming to uni. They just wake up, brush their teeth. Someone oh, will come in their pajamas. Back in my days, there was no, there, there was no Uber anyway. It seems a long time ago. I have friends who live on campus. You just, you just, they just drag themselves to uni. But it's in discipline. Oh, I went to bed late. Why? You're watching Netflix. Even if you have deadline. You know you have to the following day. You have to make the sacrifice. I, in my second year, I failed. I had to do three, three receipts over summer. It was, it was the worst time of academic life. It was so bad, I just couldn't imagine it. I prayed. I prayed, I fasted. Because I knew that, hey, even if I look at my notes, <laughs> there was nothing to read. <laughs> because back then, there was no le online lecture. Ah, man, I fasted for the first time. MBL, I fasted. Okay, I don't speak in tongues then, but I prayed. I prayed, but <laughs> what you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> oh, Lord of God. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, discipline, if done the right way, Will get you the result you need. You need to drive yourself on the journey of exploit. Apostle Paul said in First Corinthians chapter nine and verse twenty-seven, "But I discipline my body and keep it under control. What you cannot control is controlling you." He said, "Lest after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified." When you are disqualified from the race of life, how can you do exploit? Number six, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Very quickly, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to do exploit in, a, in, in your chosen field, you've got to prepare yourself. There is a time and a season for everything. You can't just wake up and wish yourself to have first class. You can't just wish yourself that you're going to do well in that job interview if you don't prepare. Daniel 12 and verse 4 says, But you, Daniel... Keep his prophecy a secret. Seal up the books until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. Daniel took time to prepare himself. What preparation must you make? Ask yourself. You know, if you chose a career, you need to work hard to be able to achieve. You need to work hard to be able to do exploits in that career. You know what to do. You don't prepare to do it. You, you, you know, there is that I say, if you fail to prepare, that means you're preparing to fail. You go for an exam. You didn't prepare for the exam. What are you telling people? That means you are, you are prepared to fail. I've seen people go to an exam, or after five minutes, they stand up, they go. Ah. Me, <laughs> I know where I'm coming from. I know how much quiz I'm paying. I'll write something in that exam. I will not leave. In those people, you just know they are prepared to fail. 
I, I cannot do that. I cannot go into an exam or if I don't know anything, I must write something. I must write something. You see, we should never stop learning. But make sure that the knowledge you are learning is true knowledge, not false education. You can learn and learn the wrong thing. That's even worse. That's even worse. Ignorance is not an excuse in the 21st century. In fact, they said that if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. Because they will never find out. Preparation is key. Preparation is key. As we round up this evening, number seven, righteousness. Romans 14, verse 17 and verse 18, righteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, for you to do exploit, you need to be in the right stand with God. Righteousness means to be in the right, the word that translates righteousness, it means to be in the right standing with God. If you're on the wrong side of the king, how can you do exploit in his kingdom? You can imagine now, if I'm on the right, if I'm on the wrong side of the law in the other kingdom, the queen will charge me to court. How can, what can I, how, how can I do exploit in the other kingdom if I'm, God forbid, I'm in the prison? Verse 7 says, says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of, a, or, but of living a life of goodness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The, that, that word that translates goodness in the King James says righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And verse 18 says, if you serve Christ with this attitude, you will, you, you will please God and others will approve of you too. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot live in sin and do exploit. You cannot live a sinful life and do exploit. You cannot. No matter what you do, you are wasting your time because you are living in sin. Because sin separates you from God. Galatians 5 and verse 19 to 21. If we continue to live in sin, we are just deceiving ourselves. We cannot do, we would never do great exploits. It says, it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immoralities, impurities, lustful pleasures, next verse, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, next, next verse, 21. And it says, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living the sort of life will not, you will never inherit the kingdom of God. You will never be part of the kingdom of God. So if we, if, we, if we live in sin, you see, one of the guests that spoke at the conference, I really encourage you to go, and, go on our YouTube channel and listen to the messages from last week and their powerful messages. You know, one of the speakers says that these days people, people live in sin and they look for another name for it. They try to justify why they, what they, are, why they are doing what they are doing. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. There is no justification for sin. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not enter the kingdom of God. You know, and if you're a kingdom you are not part of, how will you be able to do exploits in that kingdom? Let us rise up on our feet. I want you to pray. You see, now I'm dealing with you and I. There are things that we need to work on. There are things I need to work on. Everyone is work in progress. But you see, if I go to God in prayer, then God is able to help me. Half of the things, possibly all of the things I've said here, you can't even do it in your own power. But you need to humble yourself enough to go to God. If you are not humble, if you are not courageous, if you don't have integrity, if you don't give yourself, if you are not disciplined, if you are not prepared, and if you don't live in right stand, the reason why some people don't go to church is because they are living a sinful life. They, they, are, they know that their life is they're not, they, are, they are living an unrighteous life. So they themselves, they are condemning themselves by themselves. They will give you reasons why they, are, they can't come to church or have deadline. Everybody has deadline. Deadline is not an excuse. Don't you come and don't you come and preach. I want you to pray and say, God help me. 
I don't know if any of these seven points I, I said tonight, if there is one or two that you need to work on, just pray and say, God, let grace come upon me to be able to do in the name of Jesus. Just speak to and say, God, help me. Just ask me to help you. Just pray and say, God, help me. I want to be humble. I want to have integrity. I want to be courageous. I want to give myself. I want to be.